Brooklands was a 2.75-mile motor racing circuit and aerodrome built near Weybridge in Surrey, England, United Kingdom. It opened in 1907 and was the world's first purpose-built motor racing circuit as well as one of Britain's first airfields, which also became Britain's largest aircraft manufacturing centre by 1918. The circuit hosted its last race in 1939 and today part of it forms the Brooklands Museum, a major aviation and motoring museum, as well as a venue for vintage car, motorcycle and other transport-related events. History equals Brooklands Motor Circuit equals The Brooklands Motor Circuit was the brainchild of Hugh F. Lock King, and was the first purpose-built banked motor race circuit in the world. Following the Motor Car Act 1903, Britain was subject to a blanket 20 miles per hour speed limit on public roads, at a time when nearly 50% of the world's new cars were produced in France. There was concern that Britain's infant auto industry would be hampered by the inability to undertake sustained high speed testing. Apparently, drawing inspiration from the development at Brooklands, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway was built soon afterwards and held its inaugural race in August 1909. Requirements of speed and spectator visibility led to the Brooklands track being built as a 100 feet wide, 2.75 miles long, banked oval. The banking was nearly 30 feet high in places. In addition to the oval, a bisecting finishing straight was built, increasing the track length to 3.25 miles, of which 1.25 miles was banked. It could host up to 287,000 spectators in its heyday. Owing to the complications of laying tar macadam on banking, and the expense of laying asphalt, the track was built in uncoated concrete. This led in later years to a somewhat bumpy ride, as the surface suffered differential settlement over time. Along the center of the track ran a dotted black line, known as the 50-foot line. By driving over the line, a driver could theoretically take the banked corners without having to use the steering wheel. The track was opened on June 17, 1907 with a luncheon attended by most of Britain's motor manufacturers followed by an informal inauguration of the track by a procession of 43 cars, one driven by Charles Rolls. The first competitive event was held on 28 Euro June 29, with three cars competing to break the world record for distance covered in 24 hours, and the first race meeting was held on July 6, attracting over 10,000 spectators. Equals the mountain circuit equals the Brooklands Mountain Circuit was a small section of the track giving a lap one or one quarter miles long, running from the fork to the rear of Members Hill and back. It was created in 1930 using movable barriers. Equals motoring records equals 24-hour event, on 28 Euro June 29, 1907, 11 days after the circuit opened, it played host to the world's first 24-hour motor event with Salwyn Edge leading three specially converted Napier cars around the circuit. A statement of intent had been made in 1906, and Salwyn Edge entered into a physical training program to prepare for the event. His car, 804 was extensively modified, having a special fuel tank, bodywork removed, and a special windscreen. Over 300 red railway lamps were used to light the track during the night. Flares were used to mark the upper boundary of the track. Edge drove his car for the full duration, with the drivers of the other two cars taking the more familiar shift approach. During the event Edge covered a distance of 1,581.74 miles at an average speed of 65.91 miles per hour, comfortably beating the existing record of 1,096.187 miles set at Indianapolis in 1905. Women were not allowed to compete for several years, Dorothy Levitt, SF Edge's leading driver, was refused entry despite having been the first English woman to compete in a motor race in 1903, and holding the ladies' world land speed record. Edge completed 2,545 km at an average 106.06 km per hour, a record which stood for 17 years. The first standard race meeting would be held the next week. On July 6, one hour records, George E. Stanley broke the one hour record at Brooklyn's racetrack on a Singer motorcycle in 1912, becoming the first ever rider of a 350cc motorcycle to cover over 60 miles in an hour. 
the world record for the first person to cover 100 miles in one hour was set by Percy E. Lambert at Brooklands, on February 15, 1913 when driving his 4.5-litre SID valve Talbot. He actually covered 103 miles, 1470 yards in 60 minutes. A contemporary film of his exploits on that day can be viewed at the Brooklands Museum. Distance records, in July and August 1929, Violette Cordery and her younger sister Evelyn drove her 4.5-litre four-seater Invicta for 30,000 miles in less than 30,000 minutes, averaging 61.57 miles per hour and earning her second Dewar Trophy from the Royal Automobile Club. Equals World War I equals, Brooklyn's close to motor racing during World War I, was requisitioned by the War Office and continued its pre-war role as a flying training center although it was now under military control. Brooklyn soon became a major location for the construction, testing and supply of military airplanes. Equals interwar years equals. Motor racing resumed in 1920 after extensive track repairs and Grand Prix motor racing was established at Brooklyn's in 1926 by Henry Sedgrave. After his victories in the 1923 French Grand Prix and the San Sebastian Grand Prix the following year raised interest in the sport in Britain. This first British Grand Prix was won by Louis Wagner and Robert Tsar copyright Nar copyright Chal, sharing the drive in a deal age 155B. The second British Grand Prix was staged there in 1927 and these two events resulted in improved facilities at Brooklands. In 1930, the Daily Herald offered a trophy for the fastest driver at an event at Brooklands. The first year, Birkin and K. Don competed, the former in a Bentley Blower Tourer, the latter in the Sunbeam Tigress 4-liter, Don winning with a speed of 137.58 miles per hour. In 1932, Birkin won driving his red monoposto Bentley Blower No. 1, clocking 137.96 miles per hour. The track record stood for two years, before being beaten by John Cobb driving the 24-litre Napier Railton, which holds the all-time lap record at 143.44 mph. During the late 1930s, Brooklands also hosted mast start cycle racing events organized by the National Cyclists' Union. In 1939, it was used as a location for the Will Hay film, Ask a Policeman. When World War II broke out in 1939, motor racing ceased and the site was turned over to wartime production of military aircraft. Some of the track was damaged during this time by enemy bombing and a new access road to the Hawker factory was cut through from Oyster Lane. Other sections were also covered by temporary dispersal hangars. Brooklyn's Aerodrome equals 1909-1914 equals Brooklands was also one of Britain's first airfields. In 1908 Elliot Verdon Row was based at Brooklands and carried out the first taxiing and towed flight trials of a British full-size powered aircraft by a British pilot. On Friday 29 October 1909 the first official powered flight at Brooklands was made by Frenchman Louis Paulin and his farm and biplane. This special event attracted 20,000 people and was the first public flying display at Brooklands. Operating from specially prepared land inside the racetrack and given his own aeroplane shed, Paulin made a series of flights on the following days, flying to a height of some 720 feet on the Saturday and setting a new British endurance record of 2 hours 49 minutes 20 s on the Monday. During 1910 Brooklands rapidly became a major centre of flying in Britain in that summer, Hilda Hewlett and Gustave Blondeau opened Britain's first flying school at Brooklands. Hewlett and Blondo also started their aircraft manufacturing company, Hewlett and Blondo Limited there before moving to larger premises in Clapham and London. Later in 1910 the Bristol Aeroplane Company also established a flying school, as did Roe. Vickers opened a flying school on January 20, 1912 and among its first instructors were a Harold Barnwell and Archie Knight. Seventy-seven pupils including Hugh Dowding were taught to fly until the school closed in August 1914. In February 1912 Thomas Sopwith opened his flying school and in June, with several others, he set up the Sopwith Aviation Company there, although their manufacturing premises were at Kingston-upon-Thames. 
other aviation pioneers came to Brooklands before World War I including Prince Serge de Bolotov who tried to build a large tandem triplane in a shed there in 1913. Blah copyright riot, Martinside and Vickers also later produced military aeroplanes at Brooklands which became Britain's largest aircraft manufacturing centre by 1918. Many flying schools operated here before 1914 and the aerodrome became a major flying training center between the wars. Equals World War I equals, during World War I Brooklands closed to motor racing and was requisitioned by the War Office. Vickers Aviation Limited set up a factory in 1915, and Brooklands soon became a major center for the construction, testing and supply of military aeroplanes. Civilian flying schools closed down or were merged into one military training school and flying training continued until at least the end of 1915. Several Royal Flying Corps squadrons including numbers 1, 8, 9 and 10 were formed and based briefly at Brooklands during the war years. Continuing significant pioneering air ground wireless trials pioneered by a Marconi team at Brooklands from 1912. The aerodrome also housed various RFC units testing and training with airborne wireless communications equipment and the world's first voice-to-ground wireless message was successfully transmitted over Brooklands in 1915. Major changes were made to the Flying Village with the construction in late 1917 of three large Belfast Trust General Service sheds for a new aircraft acceptance park. This handled the assembly and testing of large numbers of new aeroplanes and finally closed in early 1920. Equals interwar years equals, Brooklands Aviation Limited was formed in 1931 to operate the aerodrome, and commissioned British airport architect Graham Dorbound to design the Art Deco Brooklands Aero Clubhouse, which opened in May 1932. The company also operated the resident Brooklands School of Flying, as well as those at Lympton. Shoreham and Sywell aerodromes in the later 1930s. The original pre WW1 Brooklands Aero Club was reformed by the park in May 1930 with Percy Bradley as manager, and the Brooklands Flying Club was established by Brooklands Aviation in early 1933. Brooklands Aviation won a War Department contract for pilot training for the Royal Air Force and opened No. 6 Elementary Flying Training School at Sywell on June 10, 1935 training pilots with a fleet of 20 de Havilland Tiger Moths, and in 1937 the RAF Volunteer Reserve School was set up at Sywell with a further 16 training aircraft. During WW2, Brooklands Aviation became a contractor to the Civilian Repair Organization, repairing various types of damaged aircraft, particularly Vickers Wellingtons. After ending its RAF flying training in 1946, the company diversified and built plywood and GRP cabin cruiser boats designed by Alan Eckford, until 1974. Equals World War II equals, in World War II, the site was again used for military aircraft production, in particular the Vickers Wellington, Vickers Warwick and Hawker Hurricane and was extensively camouflaged. Trees were also planted in some sections of the concrete track to help conceal the Hawker and Vickers aircraft factories there. Despite these efforts, the Vickers factory was successfully bombed by the Luftwaffe and extensively damaged on September 4, 1940 with nearly 90 aircraft workers killed and at least 419 injured. The Hawker factory premises were also bombed and damaged two days later, but with no loss of life or serious disruption to hurricane production. On September 21, 1940, Lieutenant John Macmillan Stevenson Patton of the Royal Canadian Engineers risked his life when he and five others manhandled an unexploded German bomb away from the Hawker aircraft factory at Brooklands and rolled it into an existing bomb crater where it later exploded harmlessly. His bravery was subsequently recognized by the award of the George Cross. The crucial role of Brooklands in the Battle of Britain of 1940 is now explained in an exhibition at Brooklands Museum. After the bombing of Brooklands in September 1940, the Vickers Armstrong's design department with Rex Pearson, Barnes Wallace and several hundred other staff was dispersed to a secret location at the nearby Burrell Golf Course, just east of St. George's Hill in Hersham and the experimental department led by George Edwards was relocated to temporary premises at Fox Warren and Riddle Road, Cobham. These two facilities played a crucial part in the successful development of the upkeep mine, 
better known today as the bouncing bomb conceived by Barnes Wallace and deployed to such devastating effect by the dam buster Afro Lancasters of 617 Squadron, RAF, led by Guy Gibson against Germany's Ruhr Valley Reservoirs on the night of 16 a Euro May 17, 1943. Equals post 1945 equals, after the war. The circuit was in poor condition and it was sold to Vickers Armstrongs in 1946 for continued use as an aircraft factory. New aircraft types including the Viking, Valletta, Varsity, Viscount, Vanguard and VC-10 were subsequently, designed, manufactured and delivered from there. In 1951, construction of a new hard runway required a section of the motor circuit's famous bifleet banking to be removed to allow Vickers Valiant V bombers to be flown out to nearby Zlie Airfield which offered a longer runway and less built-up surroundings than Brooklands. This airfield opened as a flight test center for Vickers in 1944 and used until 1972. After considerable expansion with increasing commercial success in the 1950s, the Vickers factory expanded to its peak size in the early 1960s in preparation for the VC-10 manufacturing program and became a major part of the new British Aircraft Corporation in 1960. Substantial investment in the site at this time saw many new buildings constructed and also existing premises modified. First, in the mid-1950s, came a new assembly hall for the Vickers Viscount known as B-1 and rebuilt as one long double bay structure parallel to the runway. A large new 60,378 square feet VC-10 flight shed hangar was ready to house the prototype VC-10 airliner by 1962 and a second even larger flight shed was added alongside this by 1964. The latter was probably the largest aircraft hangar in Europe at the time and became known locally as the Cathedral Hangar while the smallest shed was called the Abbey. The huge factory at Brooklands went on to design and build the BACTS-2. 111 and major assemblies for Concord. The Labour government's cancellation of TSA-2 in 1965 and the disappointing lack of significant orders for VC-10S and Concord saw the factory contract from the early 1970s. It became part of the newly formed British Aerospace in 1977 and finally closed in 1988-89, although BAE systems still retain a logistics centre there today. Brooklyn's Museum in 1987, Brooklyn's Museum Trust was formed with Sir Peter G. Massafield as chairman, and began to record, research, preserving and interpret all aspects of the site's heritage. The museum project began after a highly successful temporary exhibition about Brooklyn's was staged in 1977 by Elmbridge Museum in Weybridge and, with support from British Aerospace, Elmbridge Borough Council, Gallia Limited and many dedicated individuals. This led to the selection of a 30-acre heritage site in the NE corner of Brooklands. As well as organizing numerous aviation, motoring and other events since the mid-1980s, the museum also staged regular fly-ins for visiting light aircraft from 1991 to 2003 using the northern half of the original tarmac runway and staffed these events with an all-volunteer team. Brooklands made a notable TV appearance when it featured in the 1990 The Disappearance of Mr. Davenheim episode of Agatha Christie's Poirot, when Hercule Poirot investigates a crime committed involving a racing driver. The banking of Brooklands was also used as a road location in an episode of the bill where the CID foiled an armed robbery and resulted in a shootout. American car enthusiast Barry Meguia has featured the Brooklands on his speed channel show Car Crazy. In early 2004 the central area of Brooklands including the hard runway and parts of the remaining circuit was sold to Daimler Chrysler UK Retail and Mercedes-Benz World Open to the public on October 29, 2006. This development incorporates a vehicle test tracks and an off-road circuit and includes a conference center and extensive Mercedes-Benz showrooms. Following significant earlier work by the Brooklyn Society, certain buildings, Structures and remaining sections of the track first became the subject of preservation orders from 1975 and this legal protection was reviewed by English Heritage and increased by the DCMS in 2002. A draft Brooklyn's conservation plan was instigated by English Heritage and prepared in 2003 for Daimler Chrysler by DC UK consultants Terence Irk. In 2015, 
This important reference document will be completed and fully updated by consultants working for the Brooklands Heritage Partnership. On September 25, 2013, the last flying VC-10, an RAF K-3 tanker, serial number ZA-147, made its final flight from RAF Bryce Norton to Bruntinghorp Airfield, this being the end of the type's remarkable 51-year career. Although this aeroplane is due to be scrapped, on the previous day its sister, ZA-150, was acquired by Brooklyn's Museum for Preservation at nearby Dunsfield Aerodrome and was delivered there by an RAF-101 squadron crew. This was the last VC-10 built, first flown from Brooklyn's on February 16, 1970, and also one of the very last complete aircraft manufactured at Brooklyn's. The retirement of these two VC-10s also ended a 100-year period of Brooklyn's built aeroplanes operated by the British Armed Forces. Brooklyn's centenary, Brooklyn's Motor Course celebrated its centenary on 16 June 17, 2007. Throughout 2007, various special events were organized by Brooklyn's Museum in order to celebrate its 100th birthday. Events included use of the Byfleet Banking for the first time in nearly 70 years, a Formula One car demonstration by McLaren Mercedes, driven by Gary Paffett in conjunction with Mercedes-Benz World and a 24-hour slot car race to commemorate SF Edge's achievement of driving for 24 hours averaging over 60 miles per hour. Brooklyn's Today Modern companies based at Brooklyn's Today include Argos, BAE Systems, Curry's PC World, Japan Tobacco, Marks & Spencer, Mercedes-Benz World, Mothercare, Namalets, One Subsea, Procter & Gamble, Sony, The Storage Pod, John Lewis and LG Electronics UK Limited. Brooklyn's museum houses many historic aircraft including the Vickers Wellington bomber recovered from Loch Ness in 1985, a British Airways Concorde, GBBDG, the UK's first production Concorde, and now also owns the 40% scale Concorde model GCONC displayed for many years as a gate guardian at Heathrow Airport. After restoration and repainting, the model was relocated for similar duty at Brooklyn's Museum's public entrance off Brooklyn's Drive on September 29, 2012. There are also many other civil and military aircraft on display including a Vickers Vanguard, Viscount, VC-10. The majority of these exhibits were built at Brooklyn's or have close associations with the site. The VC-10 was built and first flown at Brooklyn's in 1964 and after airline service with British United and later British Caledonian Airways, in 1974 it became the official VIP transport for the Sultan of Oman until retired and flown back to Brooklyn's on July 6, 1987 and donated to Brooklyn's Museum by the Sultan of Oman's Royal Flight. Although the circuit is no longer drivable, it can still be simulated in the spirit of Speed 1937 game for the PC and Sega Dreamcast, in which it was recreated in detail. Several other video games also feature Brooklyn's and Brooklyn's Museum's Formula One simulator also features a detailed computer simulation of the pre-war racetrack. In 2009, BBC Top Gear presenter James May announced plans to recreate the full-length Brooklyn's using Skullic Strict track and cars. This was undertaken with a team of 350 volunteers building the track from an uncounted number of pieces of Skullic Strict track, navigating ponds and roads, closely following the route of the old Brooklyn's track. This event broke the Guinness World Record for the longest ever Skullic Strict track in the world intended to measure the original 2.75 miles of the original Brooklyn circuit but in reality recording 2.95 miles in length. The episode was shown on BBC Two on November 17, 2009 as part of James May's Toy Stories. BBC TV's Antiques Roadshow was filmed at Brooklyn's Museum in July 2009 and subsequently produced as two programmes for its next series and first broadcast on 10 and 17 January 2010. Apart from Brooklyn's museums displays and exhibits, today there are a number of memorials to Brooklyn's. The first of these is the Brooklyn's Memorial built by Vickers Armstrongs to mark the 50th anniversary of the opening of the motor course and was unveiled by Lord Brubazon of Tara in July 1957. This impressive concrete-faced monument featured a fine bronze letters, P, 
plaque and related inscriptions summarizing the site's history from 1907 to Euro 57 and was originally located at the north end of the aerodrome, was designated as a scheduled monument in 2002 then relocated and restored in a new position just east of the riverway on the museum site to make way for the new Mercedes-Benz World Complex which opened in 2006. The original bronze fittings were stolen in the 1970s but the plaque was later found and is now displayed in the main entrance foyer of the former Bark Clubhouse. A memorial dedicated to Brooklyn's aircraft design and manufacturing heritage was specially designed and manufactured by British Aerospace in the late 1980s to mark the closing of its last factory there. This takes the form of a large engraved acrylic panel displayed at the southern end of the old runway close to the entrance to the community park and a children's nursery. Forgotten and overgrown until quite recently, this has now been rediscovered and is still in good condition. Another initiative was taken in the early 1990s by the developers Trafalgar Brookmount Limited who commissioned an artist to design and produce two large brown terracotta gate statements. These are located at the east end of Wellington Way and the south end of Sopwith Drive and feature representative images of Brooklyn's pre-1940 history namely the Napier Railton, Vickers Vimy and the two former clubhouses. In 1993, H.R.H. Prince Michael, of Kent officially opened a new Garden of Memories at Brooklyn's Museum which features a growing number of commemorative plaques in memory of many people who have been associated with Brooklyn's for more than 100 years. In February 2015, it was announced that Brooklyn's would receive a multi-million pound facelift. The A4.68 million pounds Heritage Lottery Fund grant is funding AA7 million pounds Brooklyn's aircraft factory and racetrack revival project. This will result in the relocation and restoration of the listed 1940 Bellman hangar complete with a comprehensive new aircraft factory exhibition inside as well as construction of a two-story flight shed housing archives and a workshop on the ground floor with another aircraft exhibition hall above. Restoration of the adjacent finishing strait is also part of the scheme and includes reinstating the lost section beneath the existing hangar floor. People associated with Brooklyn's Gallery Brooklyn's Museum Exhibits Notes Further reading, Beecham, RH 25 Years at Brooklyn's Track London, Regency Press ISBN 0-7212-0619-0 Gardner, Charles 50 Years of Brooklyn's, Max Vine, DR Brooklyn's Aircraft, Venables, David Brooklyn's, The Official Centenary History External links Brooklyn's Museum, Brooklyn's Trust Members, The Brooklyn Society, Mercedes-Benz World, The Heights, Brooklyn's, Brooklyn's, The Crucible of Auto Racing, Speed Hunters Article, 71907. The opening races and speed trials on the new cement track of the Brooklyn's Racing Club at Weybridge, England, Historic Purpose Built Grand Prix Circuits on Google Maps, Brooklyn Circuits in Open Street Map.